reasons why you should come and watch the musical. So many reasons. The, because music is, I mean, this is supposed to be a rock show, okay? And if you, if you come into a rock of ages, it's supposed to be like a rock concert. It's not like watching a video. I mean, it's like you can watch, you can watch a movie on your phone. You can watch a movie, you know, on a television screen or whatever. But if you want to watch, be, you want to experience a rock live concert, you go to a live concert. It's like the same with you can watch a movie, you can watch a movie anytime you want, but to have an experience for the night, you come to, to see a stage show, come and see it live. Um, you know, guess what? It's in 3D. This is actually in 3D, ladies and gentlemen. 4D, because you can <laughs> smell us as well. But also more than that, um, this is the original. Uh, Rock of Ages, the movie, was based on the show. The show, so the show came first. The show came first, and this show, I actually saw this show off-Broadway in New York. Um, Gosh, years ago now, and uh, I remember seeing it in a small theater in the, the New World stages in New York, and fell in love with it. Like it was so much fun um, that I thought I want to do that show. It inspired me to actually do a show. It's very rare that I actually watch something. And I think I want to be a part of that. And when you do, you you know you strive for it. And so when I got the role of Stacey Jacks, finally, um, it was a dream job. And um, also let you know that uh, Tom Cruise. Uh, had his first day of rehearsal in LA when I was doing the US tour of Rock of Ages in LA. And him, he came with, with Adam Shankman, the director, and Katie Holmes. They all came to see the show that night. So if Tom Cruise came to see our show, maybe you should come and see our show too. Um, I was basically, for the first time he saw seen Stacey Jacks, was when he saw me. And um, we, I met him afterwards, and we had a chance to talk about the character a little bit. Of course, it's not my job to talk about the character. That's the director's job to develop the character. I believe there are some differences with the movie and the stage show, which there always are, because you can do a lot of things in film which you can't do on the stage. Um, they've developed Stacy Jack's character, so I think it's uh, is um, what more developed in the in the movie. Because when you have someone like Tom Cruise at your disposal, you want to make the most of it. Right. So um, they've extended Tony, Stacey Jacks' persona. But also there's a slight variations with um, the storyline, which I've heard. Um, I can't reveal too much right. because that would just be, uh, that would be wrong of me to do that. Right. Uh, a guy meets a girl. They, they move from country towns, small towns, into Los Angeles. To they work on the on the in Sunset Strip, you know, in the late '80s. It's a love story set to um, the soundtrack of all these rock hair bands of the '80s. You know, it's um, uh, it's a kick-ass love story, and um, it's uh, something that that people will go out and, and feel wonderful for watching. And if you come and see the, the stage show, I guarantee it'll be the loudest, the uh, most fun you've ever had to see a theater, ever. It's all people who love music. It's also people who love love, because it's all about love. <laughs> I want to know what love is. Um, and uh, it, it's about um, having a good time. And I think it's also about dreams, aspirations. And there's a real message behind the story of Rock of Ages that you know, it doesn't matter if you achieve your dreams or not, as long as you find happiness and find love, then you know, you, you're doing very well in life. Ah, well, you see, Stacy Jacks, um, he has, he's all, uh, there's a lot of costuming that comes with Stacy. So if I was to give you Stacy Jacks now, it would kind of look a little bit limp, so to speak. But um, because it being set in the 80s, it's all about the hair. Yeah. It's all about, you know, painted nails and it's all the clothes of the 80s, you know. It's like, it's a time of the excess of the 80s where um, too much was never enough. Right. You know, it was, rock and roll had hit a point where they couldn't actually go any further. 
that's why that grunge era, era happened because when they stripped everything back and they said it's gone too far yeah. you know there's, there's so much there's guitar solos that are like people well, guitarists explode at the end of their solo you know and there's a um, singer singing so high and so loud and, and, and there's exorbitant costumes you know dude looks like a lady yeah. uh, is it, a point of excess where it's like no 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 time in history has so much been spent on recording you know like there were multi-million dollar deals people were making billions out of music and now people don't make that much money out of music because of all the digital age of course and all that um, but and, and also with the grunge era it was kind of a throwback away they wanted to shy away from all this excess but that's why the 80s is such a very special time for music it was a point where rock and roll had hit its peak as far as being extravagant and flamboyant and camp in a way you know um, and he had to have a good sense of humor about it too because they did all things in tongue in cheek you know, they didn't take themselves so seriously whereas in the grunge era they kind of did whereas in, um, in the 80s it was kind of like no it was, it, was, it was still fun it was still a time when everyone was optimistic about the future it was a time when people believed that dreams do happen you know that presidents don't lie to you anymore <laughs> that you know when you go to a war you're fighting for the good side Like you can do whatever you want, you can be whatever you want, and music can go wherever it can go, and too much is never high enough, you know. So it was a, a, a decade of fantastic music, of ex fantastic rock stars, like really amazing personalities, and uh, you know, it was a time when people weren't afraid to go there, and so that's why um, p people should really just check it out and to relive it. I mean, you have people who are who actually uh, lived through the 80s and yeah well you know you and me both <laughs> won't reveal our ages yet okay but um, but this, for us it's reliving our childhood right it's reliving the soundtrack of our youth and yet there are people who have never been through the 80s or kids as I look around now I know these kids <laughs> were born in the 80s or in the 90s or oh my gosh heaven forbid even born in the noughties and um, they never experienced the 80s, or they know it from, um, you know, YouTube or they Google it or Wikipedia, um, and they're discovering this music for the first time, and uh, you know, it's it's cool. It's cool that you see all these different people come to see the show, and they, and from kids to grandparents, love the music. Okay. All right. You see. I was so impressed with Jessica Sanchez because she uh, really delivered, like, you know, um, the way she sang. I, I didn't see too much of the, sh the show um, because I was in London, so I only catch a little glimpse. But the first time she caught my attention was when I think they were just playing, sitting around a piano. She just sang to a piano and sang the song that really was way beyond her years. You know, she's only 16 years old. She really delivered. Like, I don't think she her nerves got to her. Like, I feel my nerves got to me because I couldn't handle the pressure. The pressure was so fierce and so strong. Imagine being in front of the world audience, like having a song that you've only learned for the last two days. You're still thinking about the lyrics in your head. And you have to go on the stage and sing in front of millions, millions of people. And then at the end of your song, people are going to tell you what they didn't like about it and what they think, you know, you should do and whatever. You know, it's it's... It's so nerve-wracking. There are times when I went on stage to sing, and I had absolutely no saliva, and I wanted to throw up. And I just wanted. I said, I said, why do I, why, why do I do this? It actually stopped me from enjoying my music. I, just, I didn't want to do it anymore because it was, it wasn't fun. It was took all the fun away. It was so much pressure. Um, and Jessica was, um, she handled herself with such grace, and uh, you know, um, the fact that she came second, right? Yes. You know, it's like. That's not a bad thing at all. In fact, you know, you see a lot of people who do so much better by not winning American Idol. Yeah. And I think, you know, um, Jessica Sanchez is a champion. She definitely deserves to be a champion, champion. And as far as we're all concerned, she is a champion. She doesn't have to get the title. She's already won our hearts. It depends on who's paying me. Okay. <laughs> well, sometimes uh, it depends on, on, on uh, 
on the job. Each job is so different. Like the moment, um, my, the show that I'm doing in London is, is a Michael Jackson musical, but it's, it, there's no storyline to it. It's just song after song after song. Um, and so it's about singing. It's all about singing. And of course you have to convey the message and you have to perform the song and have a story in your head about what you're singing about. But um, of course in that job, singing comes first. Um, however, you know, there are other times when, when, you know, when you're doing this pure acting job that acting comes first. I think with musicals, though, with the storyline, for example, like Rock of Ages, I think it's, it, they're pretty much on the par because you can't sing a song um, in character as the character if you're not in character. And you have to find a way that your character would get to that song. You can't just suddenly burst into song because that's, that's it's boring. That's boring and people don't want to see that. People want to see um, a character develop. They want to see the reason, the reason why I sing the song is because the character feels this way or reacts in this way. And that's what makes it interesting. That's what makes it fun to watch too. So many things I love about the show. Um, I, I love being the rock star that I was always afraid to be. And I can get away with it in this show because I'm just playing Stacy Jacks. It's not Mega Yes, it's Stacy Jacks. So I get to do things which I only dreamed about doing and, and get away with it, which is really cool. Um, of course, my mom's going to see the show and she's going to have a lot of questions about things. I'm going to be in a lot of trouble with my mom for sure. Uh, it feels so right. Can I say that? Uh, today I just walked, walked into rehearsals. They've been rehearsing for a couple of weeks and I just walked in as though I've been here all the time. And I've, been, I've sat in and it was as though that this was meant to happen and these people were meant to do what they're doing. It's as though I could be anywhere in the world and these people are world-class performers, absolutely world-class performers. Um, so impressed with the way that they sing and, and the way that they perform. And, they're so engaging and they're so eager to get it right, you know, that they work so hard. And we have um, such wonderful direction um, for musically and artistically. Uh, and it's, it's, it's nice to be able to do a workshop version of it, because our version here in the Philippines is very different to what I did on Broadway, very different to what I did on the U.S. tour. Um, but well, in terms of uh, choreography, in terms of staging, in terms of, in terms of direction. I mean, of course, the character and the essence of the story is the same. It's how we tell the story that is different. And we have a chance now to reinvent it. So we're reinventing the story um, and making it more apt to um, what we feel is, is, will be a, a fun thing to do. can sing. I mean, they're, it's crazy. Like you have, you know, uh, all the chorus members are singing, wailing like divas. Um, all the stagehands are all singing like divas. Like I don't know which one's the cast and which one's the stage crew. They all <laughs> sound so good. It's crazy. Isn't that amazing, that kind of energy? I love it. I love it. Right? I love the energy that, uh, you know, Filipinos just want to uh, get up and sing. and, and that, you know, at first, they're first a bit shy with me. When I was walking down, hi, they're like, hi. Right? <laughs> when we played one little game that we tried to try to just sort of, so we could trust each other. Yeah. The next thing you know, they were firing away with each other and, and joking around. And, you know, we even had pancit for lunch today. Like, we sat around a table and ate pancit. I mean, where does that happen? On, that doesn't happen on Broadway. You don't have pancit on Broadway. This is home for me. This is where I was born, right. and uh, my family are Filipinos, and it's a. It, it feels good to come back every time. I remember because I would come back f for all my Christmas holidays when I was growing up. So you know, I grew up in Manila. I had my most of my Christmases in in Manila. And then we have New Year's in Baguio, um, and you know, I relate well to people here, and they get me. You know. My accent's all pretty screwed up, though. It's a bit Australian, a bit English, a bit American. I get confused with myself who I'm speaking to at times. And like, sometimes I hear myself speak, and I go, who's that? And I go, it's you. I'm like, what? I don't sound like that. Um, but 
uh, when I come to the Philippines, I can just be me, you know. And okay. even though I, I feel me at any other time, it's here. It's really the true essence of me. I'm, you know, I'm Filipino born, Australian bred, mm -hmm. but um, I'm a constant balik bayan because I keep coming back. Uh, it's there's a friendliness here, I think that I and a, a casualness which I really love. No, I don't mean that in any way condescending at all. It's a great thing that I can be speaking to you, for example. Okay. You know, we've only met today, but I feel like there's a connection already. It's like we have, for me, there is a, uh, a connection that goes beyond just saying hello, whatever. It's a cultural thing as well. It's a history. Um, there's things I don't have to explain to you, or I don't have to relate. You already get it. Um, and I think that friendliness is something that, that not only do I feel, but people say that. People, foreign, foreigners who come to the Philippines, they say it all the time. They say, everyone's so nice and friendly. Um, you know, and you guys make me seem like, like a bad person because you're so nice. I come here, I think I'm a nice guy. Oh my God, I'm an asshole compared to you guys. <laughs> and I love that. Not that I love being an asshole. Can I say asshole? Can we say that? Uh, but I just love the fact that everyone is so nice and, and go out of their way to make me feel comfortable and uh, make me feel welcome. And, uh, you know, it's, that's quite a rare thing. And it's a very special thing. And it's a very Filipino trait. Keep that. You know what? I'm, I, I'm a gun for hire right now. <laughs> I mean, we're, I'm doing Rock of Ages here at the RS, RCBC until uh, July 8th. But after that, well, okay, well, I've got two weeks in London for Thriller until July 29th. But after that, was <laughs> out there, if you want to have a really good time, if you want to come to a, the theater and see something before everybody else will see it, something unique, something uniquely Filipino and American, and Australian, all at the same time. Come for the loudest show ever you'll see on the stage. Come and see Rock of Ages, because it rocks. <laughs>